to Second Tino Missionary Baptist Church, where our pastor is Joseph Long and our co-pastor is Linda Long. And we welcome you again on this beautiful Sunday morning to come in and worship with us. And not only worship with us, but beloved, I need you to stay for the word of the Lord. The word of the Lord is what gives us power to fight off the enemy. It gives us power and strength to make it each day of the week. So I want you to tune in, share this video, go to our YouTube channel, start a watch party, and invite someone in to hear the word of the Lord on today by our pastor. But right now we want to worship God. We want you to tune your ears and tune your heart and tune your mind into our praise and worship. Hallelujah. We thank God for the glory that he is placing all over all of our lives. And we want you to come in and just lift your hands right where you're at. You may be in your bed, sitting at the kitchen table, drinking your coffee, wherever you find yourself at. I want you to pause and let's worship God together. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the glory of the Lord rise among us. Let the praises of our King rise among us. Let it rise. Stay right there. Yeah. 
up. Let it rise up. We want to feel your glory over our lives, Jesus. Let it rise up. We want your glory in our homes, Jesus. Hey, let it rise. Hallelujah, yeah. Oh, 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 Let it rise. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, come on, beloved. Give the Lord a hand clap of praise. Come on and give him glory in this place. Come on and give him glory in this place. Come on and give him glory in this place. We magnify the name of Jesus. The Bible say, let us exalt the name of the Lord together. Hallelujah. Worship doesn't just start when we come to the house of the Lord. But I want to encourage you, beloved, to start worshiping God when you find yourself at home by yourself. When you're sitting on that couch, just lift your hands and say, God, I just thank you. Thank you for the simplicity of life. You don't have to use any big words or fancy sayings. Just simply say, Lord, I thank you. And what am I thanking him for? I thank him for keeping me. Do you know how many people have lost their mind during this season of this pandemic? So many people have had mental breakdowns because they couldn't handle what's going on. But beloved, you are watching us today and God has allowed you to still be able to be in your right mind. That's enough to say, Lord, I give you glory, I give you thanks, and I give you honor. Why? Because we serve a God that is bigger than anything. We serve a God that we, can, we should just give him glory, honor, and thanks through our worship. Worship is living. You have to live your worship. Not just sing it, not just shout it, but you ought to live your worship. Hallelujah. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All oh, will sing. How great, how great is our God. Come on, somebody got to find themselves singing it. How great is our God. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will sing. How great, how great is our God. And my heart will sing 
how great is our God. Oh, how great is our God. Come on, you ought to worship him with us. Sing with me. How great is our God. All will sing. How great, how great. Understand that we're still standing. Understand that we have something to thank the Lord for on today. Understand that it's not our task to understand everything because we lean not upon our own understanding. We lean upon the understanding of the Lord. And one thing is for certain, if you don't know, I'm going to let you know that we can trust the Lord in all things. For if we were not able to trust the Lord, we wouldn't be to this point on today. So I'm asking all of you that may have 
hurt hearts right now. I'm asking all of you that may be dealing with struggles right now. I'm asking all of you that may be in emotional turmoil and financial turmoil and all of the challenges that deal with being in quarantine and, and, and starting jobs back up and whatever society is dealing with right now. Focus your heart, focus your mind on the Lord our God and he will see you through. When you feel that despair, don't try to understand it. Just lift your hands to heaven and say, Lord, I just need you right now. Don't be afraid to let the Lord know that you need him. Don't be afraid to fall helpless before the Lord and say, Lord, I don't have it all together. Lord, I need you on today. Submit yourself to the Lord and watch what he'll do in your life. Give your all, give your heart, give your being, give everything you have to the Lord our God your life will change, the atmosphere around you will change, the people around you will be affected because of what you do, and you will see everything around you just go to another level. So I say to you, don't be weak, don't be weary, simply hold on to the Lord our God, and everything, I promise you, will be all right. We have a magnificent, dynamic message coming from our pastor on today. He's going to uplift our spirits. He's going to give us the, 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 the bread of life on today. That if we would take it and, and just consume that bread, we will be different. If we would take that bread of life and share it with others, they'll be different. If we will put that message out into the universe, the whole world can be different. So internalize it, clear your hearts, clear your minds, get your focus ready to receive the word of God on today. But before we do that, amen. We're going to have a word of scripture from our own Minister Sarah Taylor, amen. And then we'll have a, a, a word of prayer from our own Minister Marcelo Mays. And then the next voice you hear after that will be our own Pastor Long sharing with us the Holy Writ, sharing with us the word of God that we might lead this session on today better than how we came in. That we might not be conquered by the ills of this world, but we might be made stronger by the word of God. So God bless you. I say amen to you. Gather your family around. Share this out with others. Start your watch parties if you haven't. And be prepared to have a life-changing word on today. If you will only receive it, it's going to be put out there. In Jesus' name we say to you, amen and God bless. Good morning. I'm Minister Sarah Taylor and I'm reading our scripture for today, which will be coming from Ecclesiastes 3, verses 1 through 8, and I'm reading from the New Living Translation, and it reads as such, for everything there is a season, a time for every activity under the heaven, a time to be born and a time to die, a time to plant and a time to harvest, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to tear down and a time to build up. A time to cry and a time to laugh, a time to grieve and a time to dance, a time to scatter stones and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to turn away, a time to search and a time to quit searching, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to mend, a time to be quiet a time to speak, a time to love, and a time to hate, a time for war, and a time for peace. I have just read you Ecclesiastes, verse, chapter 3, verses 1 through 8, New Living Translation. We ask that you um, share our sub Facebook, social media pages, Facebook, our secondsweethome.org page, and also our YouTube channel. We thank you so much. Thank you. It's prayer time. We ask that you would get your family together, that you would bring them in front of the TV, that you would hold hands. Let us bow our heads. Most gracious and eternal Father, Master Creator of the universe, we first come to you right now, Lord, saying thank you. We thank you for another day. We thank you for another opportunity, Lord. Lord, we ask that you will continue to touch your people right now, Lord, that you will touch the grieving families right now, Lord, that you will comfort them in the midnight hour, Lord, that you will be a help 
to all of us right now, Lord, that we thank you because you're a provider to somebody right now, Lord. We thank you because you're food on the table for somebody right now, Lord. Lord, we thank you because you're a doctor in somebody's sick room right now, Lord. We, we thank you because you woke us all up this morning right now, Lord, but we ask that you will continue to bless us right now, Lord. We thank you for your grace and your mercy right now. Lord, we ask that you will touch every church that's open in your name, Lord. We ask that you will touch every pastor and preacher all over the land right now, Lord. We ask you to bless this church right now, Lord. We ask you to bless our leaders right now, Lord. Touch our ministers, Lord. Touch our audio people, Lord. We ask that you will touch Deacon Sidney and his family right now, that you will comfort his sister right now on her sick bed, Lord. We ask you will continue to bless and protect our children right now, Lord. We ask that you will go out and touch those that's hungry right now, Lord. But we know that there's somebody is dealing with depression, Lord, but we're grateful because you're a mind regulator, Lord, and we thank you because we know that all we need is to lean and depend and trust in you right now, Lord. And for that, we say thank you. Touch our pastor and co-pastor right now, Lord. Lord, we ask you to touch those that's out working on the front lines right now. But Lord, look at the man that's standing on the street corner, Lord. We ask that you would touch his mind and heart right now, Lord. We thank you right now, Lord. We thank you for Jesus right now that he died for us, that we didn't have to die, that we may have a right to the tree of life. But Lord, on the third day, he got up with all power in his hand. And for that, Lord, we give you all the honor and all the glory right now, Lord. We thank you. Lord, we ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank God for that scripture by our own minister, Sarah Taylor, and that prayer by Minister Mays. We thank God for you again, that if you just tuning in, welcome to Second Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church. Listen, take the time to share um, this broadcast. We want to make sure that this message gets out to the entire nation. The word of the Lord should be over the entire nation. Uh, before we sing this song, the next voice, after we sing this song, you will hear our pastor, Pastor Joseph Long, who will bring to us the bread of life, the good news, the gospel of Jesus Christ. So don't go anywhere. Stay for the word of the Lord. Hallelujah. We just want to worship God on this morning. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Yes, Lord.
worship him. We adore him. For this is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. We give you glory. We give you honor, God. You are the awesome of awesome. We thank you for another day. We invite you to share this service with those that are going through. Share the word of God with those that are around you, your loved ones. For it is only through the word of God that we are going to recover. And we are recovering by his grace and by his power. The process is already in the making. We can give God the glory for all that he has done. We invite you to sit down with your family. There is a word from the Lord. And share in the blessings of God's holy word with us this morning. We're asking for prayer for our co-pastor who was out ill this morning. We're asking that you would hold her up in prayer, not only her, but the sick and afflicted everywhere and all of those that we're duty bound to pray for. We ask you to look for down on those that are less fortunate than you are. And remember them in your daily prayer. At this time, we're going to the word of God. Our morning scripture will be taken from the 12th chapter of the book of Acts. Acts chapter 12, and we commence our reading from verse 5 down to verse 17, verse 5 through 17. We give you time to get there, get your Bibles out and your phone apps and go to the Word of God because we're in a day and age now where we have to learn how to read the Word of God for ourselves. For everybody that stands behind the sacred desk is not doing the will of God. So we must learn how to read God's Word that we might have clarity ourselves. We're going to be reading this morning from the NIV version. And I'm honored of God to have my reader... Reverend Gerald Ambrose is going to read for us this morning, and we're blessing God that the Word of God is a light in our path, and He guides and leads us through His Word. Let's go to the Word. Amen. The book of Acts, chapter 12, beginning at verse 5, NIV. It was about this time that King Herod arrested some who belonged to the church, intending to persecute them. He had James, the brother of John, put to death with the sword. When he saw that this met with approval among the Jews, he proceeded to seize Peter also. This happened during the festival of unleavened bread. After arresting him, he put him in prison handing him over to, the, to be guarded by four squads of four soldiers each. Herod intended to bring him out for public trial after the Passover. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. The night before Herod was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers, bound with two chains. Yes, sir. And sentries stood guard at the entrance. Yes. Suddenly, an angel of the Lord appeared, and a light shone in the cell. Yes. He struck Peter on the side and woke him up. Quick, get up, he said. And the chains fell off Peter's wrist. Yes. Then the angel said to him, put on your clothes and sandals. And Peter did so. Wrap your cloak around you and follow me, the angel told him. Peter followed him out of the prison, 
but he had no idea that the angel was doing was really happening. Yes. He thought he was seeing a vision. They passed the first and second guards and came to the iron gate leading to the city. It opened for them by itself, and they went through it. When they had walked the length of one street, suddenly the angel left him. Then Peter came to himself and said, Now I know without a doubt that the Lord has sent his angel and rescued me from Herod's clutches and from everything the Jewish people were hoping would happen. When this had dawned on him, he went to the house of Mary, the mother of John, also called Mark, where many people had gathered and were praying. Peter knocked at the outer entrance, and a servant named Rhonda came to answer the door. Yes. When she recognized Peter's voice, she was so overjoyed she ran back without opening it and exclaimed, Peter is at the door. You're out of your mind, they told her, when she kept insisting that it was so. Yes, sir. They said it must be his angel. Right. But Peter kept on knocking. And when they opened the door and saw him, they were astonished. Yes. Peter motioned with his hand for them to be quiet and described how the Lord had brought him out of prison. Tell James and the other brothers and sisters about this, he said. And then he left for another place. May the Lord add a blessing to the reading, hearing, and doing of his word. Amen. Come on, somebody say praise the Lord. We bless God for the reading of his word. We sanction the Lord in his word. Thank you, Minister Armbrister. I would like you to pay attention to verse 5 in our text scripture this morning, where it says, So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. So Peter was kept in prison, but the church was earnestly praying to God for him. I would like to pin this text and argue with you on the premise this morning about the benefits of a praying church. The benefits of a praying church. Bless you, my brothers and my sisters. As we began this morning, I want to deal with the fact that there is power in prayer. There is power in the righteous praying. Amen? There is power to do the impossible. There is power to fixate our minds and direct our paths and to lead and guide us through the will of God in prayer. As I was getting ready to study this powerful message of the benefit of prayer, I went to the New Bible Glossary to identify the word prayer, evangelist. And it simply said, prayer is a conversation with God in which we express praise, our needs, our thanks, and our concerns. After leaving there, I went a little farther to the Bible reference concordance. And the Bible reference concordance identifies prayer as communication with God, as a request to God. Leaving there, I went to the Expository Dictionary. And in the Expository 
dictionary, there was a Greek word by the name of deesis, which simply means prayer, petition, or supplication. It is simply based on a person's need. It also says in the New Testament that prayer was always addressed to God himself. Do I have a witness? Through supplication, folks, let their requests be made known. Somebody ought to be blessing God right now. They prayed earnestly unto God. My brothers and my sisters, prayer is important to the believer. Throughout prayer, there is no communication with God. And here, as we look at this book of Acts, the first chapters begin on a, by dissecting the word prayer. I wish I had a witness in here this morning. Can I preach it? For prayer plays a significant role in the story of the church as recorded in the book of Acts. In the book of Acts, you will find out that the believers prayed for guidance in making decisions. In the book of Acts, you will find that they prayed uh, for encouragement so they might be able to witness for Christ. You'll also find in the book of Acts that prayer was a normal part of their daily ministry. Stephen, the first deacon of the church, prayed while he were being stoned. It's in Acts. Peter and John prayed for the Sumerian people. And Saul of Tasha prayed after his confession. Peter prayed before he uh, raised Dorcas from the dead. I told you they prayed. Also in the book of Acts, it records Cornelius prayed that God will show him how to be saved. And then Peter was on the rooftop praying when God told him how to answer Cornelius' prayer. I wish I had had church in here. Also in the books of Acts, you'll find out that it was at a prayer meeting in Philippi that God opens Lydia's heart. Also at another prayer meeting, God opens the prison doors. And Paul, the great apostle, whenever he got ready to leave his loved ones, I feel like preaching this morning. He would always leave them with a word of prayer. And my brothers and sisters, last but not least, this morning right here in our text, we find out that the believers are in John Mark's house praying for Peter when he was in prison. And the Lord delivered him both from prison and from death. I tell you this morning that when you look through the book of Acts, just about every chapter in the book of Acts has a reference on prayer. It lets us know and it makes it clear for us that we ought to pray all the time. I wish I had a witness in here. Acts makes it clear, makes the lesson clear that prayer is both our thermometer and our thermostat. For it is through prayer that the power of God and the power of praise and worship is orchestrated as we serve the Lord. Prayer sets the tone for service. The Bible teaches us that we should pray. Do I have a witness? 
Luke chapter 18 verse 1 says that man ought to always pray not to faint. First Thessalonians chapter 5 verse 17 says pray without ceasing. Second Chronicle chapter 7 verse 14 one of my favorite passages of scripture says it's my people who are called by my name and shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. Then will I hear from heaven and will forgive their sins and heal their land. Flip over to James chapter 5, verse 13. It says, is any among you afflicted? Let him pray. I'm trying to build something this morning. Flip right over to the next verse. Verse 14 says, is there any sick among you? Oh, Lord Jesus. Let him call for the elders of the church. And let them pray over them. You need to touch somebody and tell them prayer changes things. Last but not least, in verse 16 of the same chapter, you will find that James said, confess your faults one to another. And then pray for one another that ye may be healed. Then he closes the dialogue by saying the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. I just need about three of y'all to say it's all right to pray. Because prayer changes things. Jesus himself was a man of prayer. For he always prayed to the Father. He would always pray uh, the Father's will. He would always take time and go to the secret clauses of his heart and offer words of prayer. He would often communicate with his Father. I wish I had a church in here this morning. Look at your neighbor say, neighbor, there's nothing wrong with a little prayer. Ah, more prayer, more power. No prayer, no power. Look at your neighbor saying, reason why we're in the shape we're in today is because folk don't pray like they used to. Y'all remember when we had prayer in the schools? School wasn't messed up like it is today. But now they have taken prayer out of the school, they have taken prayer out of the government, they have taken prayer out of everywhere and look at the results of the world because the Bible said the man should always pray in Luke chapter 11 you will find that even the disciples of Jesus came to him one day and said Lord teach us how to pray Jesus simply gives them that famous prayer that we classify as the Lord's prayer. I wish I had a witness in here. So my brothers and sisters, believers, ought to always pray. Do I have a witness? Somebody said, well, Dr. Long, why should we always pray? Because my mama told me simply that prayer changes things. There was an old song we used to sing some years ago that said prayer will make the difference. Man should always pray. So here today as we look at this chapter, chapter 12, we'll find out that Peter in 1 Peter chapter 3 verse 12 gives us a very good scripture to help me dissect this 12th chapter. 
Peter says, for the eyes of the Lord are over the righteous. And his ears are open unto their prayers. Simply lets us know that God sees everything that we're going through. Do I have a witness? The text opens up with God watching and God noticing Herod and what he was doing to the people of God. Herod was a wicked king. Do I have a witness? And he was persecuting the children of God. Verse 1 gives us the assurance that Herod had made up his mind that he was going to vex the church and he was going to go after the men of God. We're in a world today where the church is under attack. Do I have a witness? So Herod being king, Deacon Hannah, he, he went after the leaders of the church. You know folk don't treat preach, preachers and pastors like they used to. They're always trying to get something on you. Preachers, you might as well be careful because somebody is watching you and you know we're living in a day and age now where they'll take their iPhone and record you. Going in the wrong places and doing the wrong thing because they're always trying to get something bad uh, on the man of God. I wish I had some help. So here I went after the man of God. The Bible said as he opens the book of, of Acts chapter 12, you will find him attacking James. He arrests James and he puts James to death. You'll find him then consoling himself. I ain't got long to preach it. He tells himself because the Jews was so excited and so elated about him killing James. They were happy to see the man of God fall. He said, well, since they so happy about me killing James, I might as well go after Peter also. So the Bible said he, he arrests Peter and throws him in jail. Look at your brothers sitting next to you and your sisters and tell them why are we always going after the church? Why are we always trying to find fault with the man of God? Y'all know how we do. We hop from church to church. Soon as we get mad at somebody, we run to somewhere else. But my brothers and sisters, I dare to pause for a few minutes and tell you that the problem is not the church. The problem is you. For you have to learn how to be faithful over a few things. And God said he will make you ruler over many. So the Bible said they arrested uh, Peter and threw him in jail. I got to hurry. Cody got to get out of here. But uh, they threw him in jail. And because Peter had such an anointing on his life, because every time they threw him in jail, God delivered him out of jail. So this time, Herod decides that after the feast, I'm going to have a public hearing and I'm going to put Peter away once and for all. So the Bible said that he assigns for squadrons of soldiers to watch over him. 
to make sure that he don't get loose. Can I preach it, Jackie? Look at what he done. He, he handcuffs two soldiers, one on the right side and one on the left side, to the man of God. And he places two on the entrance as watchmen. He face four squadrons of soldiers, which adds up to be 16 soldiers. One to serve every watch of the day. Look at your neighbor, say neighbor, they're watching you 24 hours a day. I wish Curtis every now and then they would give the old man a break, but they always got their eyes on you. They're always watching for you to make a mistake. They're always watching for some trials and tribulations to come up in your life. Preach Pastor Long. They're always waiting to see you stumble by throwing stumbling blocks in your path. But the Bible tells us to be careful of what you do to somebody else. Because the ditch that you dig, you better dig too. Old folks used to say it this way, because the first ditch that you dig will end up being yours. So the Bible said that they threw Peter in the jail cell. And my brothers and sisters, what I like about it is, is that even in the midst of his dilemma, even in the midst of his storm, you never see Peter getting upset. For the Bible said that after being handcuffed uh, to the two soldiers, you find out that when nighttime came, Peter was fast asleep. And my brothers and sisters, as I read this text, I often wondered to myself, how would you respond? If you know that you were handcuffed to two centurion soldiers and there was a great possibility that you were facing death, on tomorrow would you be able to go to sleep that night but my brothers and sisters somebody said as you look at the text you'll find now that Peter being handcuffed to the two soldiers he went out into a quick nod can I have about seven more minutes the Bible said that he fell in a deep sleep and my brothers and sisters, there might be somebody that's arguing with me this morning, I argumental and say, how could he sleep knowing that he was getting ready to be killed? The reason why Peter could take a nap on this day was because Jesus had told him prior to that that he would live to get old so he just remembered the, the promise of God and he just went on to sleep look at your neighbor say neighbor when you pray to God and God gives you revelation and confirmation yeah Lord when you pray to God and God gives you signs and wonders. Don't worry about what it looked like. Just trust God that he will make a way. Do I have a witness in here? Peter was able to fall in a deep sleep because he had got the word that the church was having a prayer meeting. Do I have a witness? And the Bible says that they were praying, 
both day and night. Do I have a witness? And I stop by to tell somebody that there is nothing like a praying church. Do I have a witness? Peter could go to sleep because Sarah Jackie and old Marcella were bent down on bending knees praying and fasting uh, that everything was going to be all right. Uh, I wish to God, Curtis, uh, I had a praying chest this morning uh, in face of this pandemic uh, that was on their knees uh, both night and day uh, holding up uh, the man of God. Uh, when was the last time uh, that you prayed uh, for your bald-headed pastor. Uh, do I have a witness in here? Uh, ah, uh, oh, shucks now. Uh, I need somebody uh, that know how to pray uh, and that's sincere. Uh, in your prayer Curtis you don't mind if I tell them this morning I don't need everyone praying for me because when Paul pray for you sometime some of these Negroes don't like you anyway and instead of praying you up they're praying for your demise. Uh, grab your neighbor uh, and say, neighbor, uh, uh, I don't need uh, everybody uh, praying for me. Uh, but I thank God uh, that I got a few members, uh, that I got a few folk. Uh, the Bible said uh, where one or two uh, assemble themselves together uh, touching and agreeing uh, on one accord uh, let me add to that uh, the Bible said uh, where one or two uh, are praying the prayers uh, where one or two uh, I lift in their hands, uh, giving God the praise. Uh, God said, uh, I will uh, make everything all right. Uh, tell your neighbor, uh, neighbor, uh, you can do like Peter. Uh, you can go to sleep at night uh, because everything uh, is so all right. Uh, Look at the text, y'all, and I got to get out of here. The Bible says, while Peter was asleep, an angel came from heaven. Do I have a witness? Peter was sleeping so good that the angel had to hunch him and wake him up. Do I have a witness? The angel tell Peter, Peter, get up. The Bible says that the shackles fell off his hand. Do I have a witness? And what bothered me, Gerald, when he woke Peter up, when the shackles fell off it didn't say nothing about the soldiers they must have been in a daze look at your neighbor and say when God get ready to bless you your enemies ain't got to move out of God's way. I need about three of y'all to tell your haters this time when God blesses me, he's going to bless me right in front of you. Do I have a witness? The Bible says that he tells Peter, put on your sandals, put on your clothes. Peter got up. Look at your neighbor, say, be obedient. Whenever the spirit tell you to do, be obedient. When you get revelation, 
from your man of God be obedient if he call a prayer service be obedient if he call Bible class be obedient the Bible says Peter got up and walked with the angel he walked to the first door the angel walked with him look at your neighbor it didn't say nothing about uh, the God stopping them. Uh, the Bible says uh, he walked to the second gate uh, and the gate flew open. Uh, look at your neighbor. Uh, and say get ready get ready there's some stuff about to open up do I have a witness let me tell somebody the governor opened back up the state but let me tell you the governor doesn't have the power to open up anything God God got the last word tell your neighbor God he got the last word the Bible said and I'm closing now that Peter walked out the gate got in the middle of town and the Bible said that the angel went back to heaven here you go y'all I'm glad I thank God for the angel the angelic power but I'd like to tell you it just wasn't an angel coming to Peter's rescue it was the prayer of the church that opened the angel that called the angel that told the angel to go down and save our man the Bible said Peter was in the middle of town he remembered that they were having a prayer meeting at John Mark's house do I have a witness they were still praying tell your neighbor don't stop praying Till you get an answer Y'all ain't gonna help me this morning Tell your neighbor Stay on your knees Until you get your breakthrough Tell your neighbor Stay on your knees Until God shows up when God shows up he shows out they were still on their knees praying our father which are in heaven hallowed be thy name thy kingdom come thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven preach past along let thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debt to us and lead me not into temptation but deliver me from all that is evil for thine is the king the power our double dog there about three of y'all the holler out holy ghost Holy Ghost power His power Will make you walk right His power Will make you talk right His power Will deliver The Bible said Peter went to the house He knocks on the door Do I have a witness And Rhoda Came to the door Look at your neighbor But I can imagine When Rhoda went to the door They were still praying Rhoda said Who is it Peter said It's me She recognized I'm leaving you now Cody I know you gotta go But I can't leave Until I tell somebody Rhoda recognized uh, that it was Peter. Uh, folk gonna recognize you uh, when God get through with you. Uh.
Tell your neighbor, get right out. The Bible said, the Bible said that she heard his voice. Tell your neighbor, can't you hear his voice? She recognized his voice. Jesus said it this way. My sheep know my voice and a stranger they will not follow everybody that belong to second sweet home knows my voice do I have a witness ain't the Lord all right slap your neighbor high five and say neighbor I ain't gotta see him because I know his voice tell your neighbor you can't fool me because I know what it sound like the Bible said Rhoda heard his voice ran back in the chair in the house and told everybody Peter is at the door she didn't have enough sense to open up the door she was so excited that she forgot about to open the door the Bible said that she told them that Peter was at the door and I'm leaving you now my time is up Asta La Vista, Arriva Deci, Deuce Down, I gotta go. It's just that simple. They said how Peter is at the door and that must be must be an angel a spirit of Peter maybe they killed him I stopped by to tell the church on my way to heaven ain't no need of praying for deliverance and don't believe that it's gonna come they were praying for God to deliver Peter but when Peter showed up they forgot about what they prayed for there's a lot of y'all today that are praying for stuff and when it shows up you forgot about what you prayed for but God but God but God God Somebody shout out all of them. Goes to the door. And they open up the door. And they see Peter standing there. And they began to yell out and rejoice. And scream and, and ask questions. Peter simply looks at them and tells them to be quiet. I simply want to tell you that our God is a deliverer. I simply want to tell you that I thank you for your prayers. I thank you for praying for me. There was a song we used to sing, my mama prayed for me. Had me on her mind. Took the time and pray for me church there's a benefit in a praying church let me say it one more time there's a benefit in a praying church and as God gives us the vision to enter back into our church let's enter back into our churches with a prayer in our spirit with prayer on our lips Praying both night and day. And simply telling him, Lord, have your way in my life today. Have your way in my spirit today. Whatever it is that you would have me to do, clean me up and make me ready to do thy will. For I am a prayer warrior. Is there any prayer warriors in the house? 
Come on, give God some praise right there. Is there any intercessors in the house? Is there anybody that know beyond a shadow of all doubt that prayer changes things? Is there anybody in the house that God have opened a door for? But God. The Bible said, but prayer. Herod would have killed Peter. But prayer. But is a conjunction that fixes everything that was prior to it. It makes it non in existence. Grab your neighbor by the hand and say, I would have been dead, but God. Grab your neighbor by, by the hand and say, I was broke, but God. Grab your neighbor by the hand, tell him, my, I almost lost my mind, but God. Write it out, but God. God made a way out of no way. I don't know about you, but I made up my mind that I'm going to be a prayer warrior. And God said, man should always pray and it bothers me. And I'm going to my seat. We want to have special days of prayer. We want to have a prayer visual once a month. <laughs> but the Bible said we should pray at all seasons. In all times, man should always pray and not cease. A little prayer, little power. Much prayer, much power. God bless you. God keep you. If you're standing with the church today, then let us learn how to pray each other up. Pray for one another. Pray that God will come into our circle. And if God come into our circle, how many you know the coronavirus can't take no lives? When God comes into our circle, he said, no weapon formed against you shall prosper. When God is in our circle, you don't have to worry about your enemies. Everything, somebody shout out everything. Somebody write it out, everything that I put in his hand, he's able to take care of. Come on, write it out, everything that I put in his hand, he's able to take care of it. So I need you to make a covenant vow to God today that I'm going to be a praying church. And I'm not going to be a selfish praying church. I'm not going to pray for God to give me things. I'm going to do like Solomon. I'm going to pray for wisdom. And I'm going to pray for a closer walk with thee. And if you do that, the Bible declares and it guarantees for us. It said, seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and its righteousness. And all of these things shall be added. Can I leave on that note? A believer ain't got no business playing for things in the first place. A believer ain't got no business. I'm going to say it one more time. Praying for things in the first place. Hallelujah. All you got to do is seek God. And when you seek God, things going to find you. I wish I had a witness in here. You ain't got to look for a job. Seek God. And the job will find you. I need a witness in here. You ain't got to seek a husband. Seek God and a husband will find you. I wish I had a witness in here. You ain't got to seek material things. Seek God and the material things will find you. May God bless you. And may God keep you. Bless God for that word. Come on, bless God for that word. Amen. The benefit of a praying church and in what time do we need prayer than us in America needing prayer now now is a time where we would like to open up the doors of the church to you we know you're at home sitting in your own living space but God can still come there and save you if you feel like I really haven't had a good relationship with God and me being out of the four walls of the church has really separated you from God. Now is a time where you can get close 
and remend that relationship that you had with God. All you got to do is believe in your heart that Jesus went up on Calvary, shed his blood so that you might have a right to the tree of life. And that's all it takes for you to be saved. You ain't got to speak in tongue. We ain't got to come to your house and lay oil on you. All it takes is you believing in your heart that Jesus was risen for you and your salvation. And you shall be saved. So if you really want to be saved, all you got to do is type it in. Lord, save me. I want to be a member of Second Sweet Home. That's all it takes. God bless you. Now at this time is a time where we all can play part. It's giving time. We asking that you all would give the best way that you know how. Even though church officially wasn't open, we still got bills. And we need your help to help us meet those requirements. So those that are members, we have an obligation of being a member and being a tither to tithes and offering. We asking that you want to come down. We are be open on Saturdays from 11 to 1 o'clock. We will have official there waiting on you for your offering. Amen. The address to the Second Sweet Home Missionary Baptist Church is 19130 Beaconsfield. That's Detroit, Michigan. 48224. Those of you that want to give by text, you can text give at number 313-855-5014. All you have to do is text the amount that you want to give and you'll be prompt from there. And those of you that are out of town and you said, you know what, I'm not in Detroit, but I still want to sow into Second Sweet Home. We have a way that you can do that. You can partner with Second Sweet Home if it's blessing you, which like we know it is. You can truly give your offering by just text give at 313-855-5014. And you can do the same thing. You're putting your amount in and hit send and it'll prompt you through. Or if you're old school and you want to send it in the mail, all you have to do is send your offering to 19130 Beaconsfield, Detroit, Michigan. 48224. Thank you for partnering with us. Thank you for being a part of Second Sweet Home. And thank you for sticking it out with us. We ask that the last thing that you do is go to our secondsweethome.org page. We will have instructions on the first phase of returning back to service. Amen. And last but not least, since I got the microphone, I'd like to take this time to wish my wife, Sunny Long, happy birthday. Everybody type in happy birthday to her. Thank you. God bless. And see you next week. Bye.